right, welcome to our weekly group demo. This is a live demo and it happens every week on Thursday morning at this time. I'm your host, Sandra Bosnar. I'm on the marketing team and I'm joined by my colleague, Austin Stone, who is a sales engineer here at trade.io. All right, so today we're gonna briefly cover the automation market and where it's going. I will go over an introduction to the trade platform, which will be followed by an in-depth look at a specific use case. We will learn how to integrate Workfront and Binder to automate the creative asset management process. We are recording this and we'll post the video to our YouTube channel where we post all of our recorded demos. So if you'd like to see uh, this demo and previous ones, you can head on over to our YouTube channel. Finally, we're gonna leave time at the end of this session uh, for some Q&A uh, where we answer your questions. A Couple of housekeeping items before we dive into today's group demo. It's important to stress that today we're only gonna cover one specific use case. However, you can use the trade platform to solve a lot of different challenges across many different uh, departments. So if at any point throughout this webinar, if you have a question, please ask us in the Q&A box. We'd love to hear your questions and thoughts. So what is the automation market? This has been called integration or IPaaS uh, before. We can begin in the late 1980s where companies like Tipco and IBM sell on-premise solutions to IT departments. This is big and expensive software. In the late 1990s, software starts to take off. Companies like MuleSoft are now addressing hybrid infrastructure, but are still selling to IT departments. In the 2000s, we see the rise of cloud computing. At around this time, we see more and more APIs. APIs become extremely popular, leading to an API economy that lets different software applications talk to each other. However, to get the full power from APIs and passing data seamlessly across software, companies realize that they need API integrations. The most successful companies realize it isn't viable to depend on their IT department to build and maintain integrations internally. Trade.io's founders realized that there was a need to empower business users to build their own low code integrations without having to rely on limited IT resources. They also saw an enormous need for automation among tech stacks to let business users drive more revenue and win more deals at scale. In the last few years, we've seen an explosion in the number of applications and tools. And let me ask everyone something. Raise your hand if you feel like you are inundated in different tools and technologies at your company or your department. I see a few people raising their hands. Thanks. Uh, so we, not only do we see more tools and technologies, but we're also seeing, uh, we're seeing this in every department in the organization. You can see how marketing and HR have close to 100 applications here. This creates a need for businesses to organize, orchestrate, and integrate their tech stacks. With the trade platform, now anyone can integrate thousands of applications and create automated processes themselves. We are now seeing business users in a variety of functions, including marketing, sales, growth, HR, finance, and many others build automated processes using our low code trade platform. We can connect any software with an API. This could be alerts in Slack, tasks in Asana, chats in Intercom, CRM software like Salesforce, marketing automation tools, and more. We have over 400 connectors in our library, and this is growing every day. Even if we don't have a pre-built connector in our library, we have our universal connector that allows you to connect to a web-based application. This is why enterprises and rapidly growing companies like DigitalOcean, AdWall, FICO, Udemy, Segment, and more trust Trey with some of their most critical business processes like managing lead scoring and lead routing and marketing to deal desk approvals and sales to detecting churn signals and customer success to HR onboarding and more. 
So now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Austin, who's going to be talking about uh, what we're going to be seeing today for today's demo. Phenomenal. Hello, everyone. Uh, if you're on the West Coast, good morning. If you're on the East Coast, good afternoon. If you're in the middle, well, good middle to you as well. <laughs> so today, project management tools, specifically Workfront, and then some other content and delivery tools. Now, if uh, you don't know what Binder is, Binder is a digital asset manager. Uh, digital asset managers essentially help creative teams manage the asset uh, essentially the asset life cycle from creation through management all the way to deployment and then archive. So um, for certain companies where maybe you manage many brands or you have a significant uh, hierarchy of digital content that gets put out there, uh, DAMs are probably a tool you have worked with before. So uh, with project management tools, those are more often than not used to manage the work that goes into developing these assets. So obviously we have creative designers, directors, producers, everyone that has a say on what does and goes on with the asset during its development. But once it's done, what happens? Well, it normally has to get put places and more often than not, it has to get put into the dam. Now, as these business processes happen by people, Someone has to go into the project management tool. They have to find the assets that are related to this project that need to go into the dam. And then once they have that, they have to decide if it's one of the assets that needs to go into the dam. And then once they place it and upload it into their digital asset manager, they then have to apply a meta property taxonomy to it. And if you manage many brands or have been in a scenario where there are many brands under your purview, those taxonomy hierarchies can get quite extensive. So um, what the Trey IO solution here provides for these creative teams, it allows them to monitor their project management tools and be able to uh, intuitively decide what they need to pull away from their project management tool once that project is finished, once that task is finished, um, and get it up into Binder, upload it with all of those meta properties so someone doesn't have to click through and find each thing. That's a really good tr slide transition there, Sander. That was, that was money. So what we're looking at here are a few screenshots of these systems. Essentially, again, you're keeping all the people that are working your project management tool in that project management tool. They're still managing the project. They're still doing the things they need to do on the assets. You still have your designers doing their things. Everyone's happy because they didn't have to learn another system. Here you have Trey in the middle. You have this workflow that's just listening to the project management tool for any sort of event that happens, such as a task is updated or a project is updated. Maybe that project was updated to complete. All of those things are things we can capture. And then finally, you see on that right-hand side, it's just a quick screenshot of the binder waiting room. We can take any of these assets and push them there and even group them together so that instead of you having to click through each individual picture, you can actually just click on a grouping of them and go through and do whatever extra validation you need. It is quite the time save. Awesome. I think we're, uh, we're all curious and, and excited to see what this actually looks like. So why don't we jump into the trade platform to see what this looks like uh, under the hood. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, okay, what we're looking at here is Workfront. If you're used to Workfront, then you know what we're looking at. For those of you who don't, this is the new Workfront experience. Um, here we are just looking at a project. This project, Workfront Binder Extravaganza, you can see there's a lot going on. We got some percentages complete. There's data everywhere, right? Essentially, in this use case, imagine we're following a project. Our assets are being developed and perfect. We reach this step called Approve for Binder. We click inside this task and we see that inside of this task, there are some documents. Um, what happens is once we reach this task and this task is complete, we can say, great, let's go and see if there are attachments on this task. Okay, great, there are. Let's go look at some custom meta properties associated with this asset. These are things that could be tagged along the way as it's getting developed. Some people use the custom form, some don't, but Custom fields, very much so a common aspect of working with a project management tool. So you can see here, we're actually giving it a different sort of name, a little bit of a drop-down tag and saying, yep, ready, it's ready to go to the digital asset manager. 
Now what I'm going to do is pop over to Trey and show you what Trey does when it sees all of that. Here we are in a workflow. Now, um, I'll quickly guide you through what we're seeing on the workflow before stepping too deeply into the use case. Essentially, on the left-hand side is where we have all of our workflow building blocks. They are those connectors that Sander highlighted on earlier. Essentially, two different categories. You've got your service connectors, the things like you saw on the screen. We've got Workfront in there. We've got Asana in there. It's essentially that whole library. Those service connectors, again, are the ones that are going to help you easily connect to these systems. And then everything else is sort of a functional helper. It's going to help you decide when to do things or potentially do some transformations. This view in the center is the workflow itself. So again, it's comprised of those connector steps, those building blocks. They're organized in a top-down manner uh, according to how your process would flow. So again, to go back to that business use case, we have something that happens in Workfront, such as a task gets updated and its status is now complete. We then say, great, let's look at this task and let me zoom in here so it's a little easier to read this very, very small font. We've got a task in here. We're going to follow that task. We're going to make sure it's valid and has all of the appropriate criteria we need. After that, we're going to say, great, I want you to take every asset that is on this task and run it through a little bit of extra validational criteria. Once you have validated that it should get sent to Binder, go ahead and download it, turn it into a final file, upload it, and then go about listing um, and associating all of the meta properties that should exist on that asset. Once all of that is done, you are inside of Binder and then able to go into your waiting room and say, great, where is my file? What do you know? Here it is. Ballard Sunset, just like this one says Ballard Sunset. So um, that's what the workflow can do. And what's really nice about this is again, the scale. There's often not just one asset, multiple things that need to go through all with their own individual taxonomies depending on the type of asset they are. So it's, it really can reduce a significant amount of manual effort that goes into keeping these two systems in check. Now, I won't go into it too deeply, but um, this is only part of the picture. There are the downstream things such as Showpad, your content delivery systems, maybe use a different content management system than a project management tool. There are a number of ways you can enable this sort of automation into your asset repository or your digital asset manager with an automation tool like Trey. Great, and uh, I wanna remind everyone, actually Austin, could you keep sharing your screen? Um, I wanted to ask you a few questions about the workflow and I want to let everyone who's here with us also feel free to ask any questions about this use case, about the trade platform, about, you know, the different connectors or the, the operations, like what everything does. But if we could just like uh, go through this a little bit more uh, slowly and just maybe dive into like uh, the upload asset part of, of Binder and uh, what we're actually seeing here. Uh, how does this work? How are you actually, you know, working uh, to upload assets into Binder? If you could just tell the audience how this uh, works. Yeah. So on this right hand side is our, uh, you could call it a properties panel, a parameters panel, an input panel. It essentially is what helps you say, this is the data I want to send to my service. So with these orange dots, these are bits of data that are coming from previous steps in the workflow. You can see how this one says, go grab the file from my file helper step. That file helper step is right here. Uh, if I wanted to go ahead and make that data map as if I was building, all I'd have to do is hover next to this circle, drag and drop a line up here and say, great, give me this file. And then voila, we have our data map. So that's actually how we're taking the data from a previous portion of the workflow and use it in this step. Now, um, without going too granular into the details about how this works, um, uploading assets to Binder uh, via the API is actually a, a lengthy process. It's actually six different API calls that are made in the background behind this single step. So true to the point about making sure this is something that um, non-developers can actually uh, attain, use, and learn, we've abstracted a lot of complexity away with what it actually takes to do this from an API perspective. So instead of you having to know and manage all six of those steps, 
Trey is actually doing that for you on the back end. So the brand ID is appropriate for your binder instance, just because you could have multiple brands you're managing all with their own taxonomies, structures, et cetera. This is a simple dropdown. It's something that we uh, pull for you upon coming in here. So uh, with the digital asset management name, so this is where you can provide a file name for it. So that's where I was using the Workfront custom fields to actually rename my file inside of Workfront instead of having to have a human do it in between or potentially later inside of the binder tool itself. One, right. one last- Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, this right here, this little audit check flag. So this is what sends it to the waiting room or not. Um, what's really neat about this is you can actually group all these assets to the waiting room. And so instead of saying, oh, I've got 15 images on this one task, you wouldn't actually have to see 15 images across this screen. You could simply click into an upload group and then all 15 of those images would be inside of this upload group where you can actually approve or deny multiple at once, thus giving you a lot more functionality and saving you a significant amount of time in that arena. Perfect. Could you go back to the workflow? I just uh, wanted to remind everyone to feel free to ask us questions in the Q&A box. We'd love to see your questions. They don't have to be, like, they don't have to be about this uh, workflow, about this use case. It could be about anything. Um, but Austin, could you tell us, so I see here a first run is first run and then there's a branch. And it says true or false. Mm -hmm. uh, could you just explain to us the logic of this? And maybe also while you're explaining this particular logic, you could also talk about other logic operations that we can use with Trey. Yeah. So uh, when you're creating those groups, it requires you to say, okay, if I am uploading multiple assets that need to be a part of a group, you need to give me, um, Binder says, hey, user, you need to give me some way to say that these are all grouped together. So the reason we have this Boolean condition here, looking at the first run, and actually what it's doing is saying, is this the first um, loop index, the first time we're actually going through this process, we have to upload our asset first. But what that actually returns us is this uh, batch ID. And so the reason we have to separate these out is because I actually need to include that batch ID on this call to make sure it's associated with the first one. And so it's got a different input. You need to have some segregation there. These two steps, when you look at them, you can see that ID now has a value in it that looks identical to the other one, except for that other um, small input I added. So all this does is say, great, help me group this together. Now, Boolean condition, pretty simple. It's a true false, right? Um, we can do multiple conditions. So say, uh, and actually I have an example of that up there. Up here, this is a multi-condition example of how you can use the Boolean helper. So you can say, great, does this task have documents? Is its status complete? And is its name equal up to approve for binder? And then you can also say every single conditions, uh, excuse me, every single one of these conditions must be met in order to proceed. So a little bit more complex, but without you actually having to add three of these whole Boolean conditions in there, it's a pretty efficient way to enable some more complex logic in your workflows. If you want something more complex than that, we do have a logic helper down here that will let you do very complex groupings. Uh, looks like we've got a question. Am I free to just read the question and answer it, Sander? Yeah, if you want to go ahead and finish your thought before we dive into the questions. But yes, thanks. Thanks for the questions. And uh, just a reminder that to use the Q&A box. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and so other than the Boolean condition, we have another one up here called branch. Branch is a little more simple. It just says, hey, tell me something to look at and I will go and process down the swim lane you told me to. So you can see here, we've got a project swim lane, a task swim lane, a document swim lane. This solution was written to um, appeal to many uses of Workfront. And so this is more of a, a bit of a switch and just requires me to hard code in tasks. So it follows that task branch, a different kind of Boolean logic. Uh, you right. know, those are kind of some of the initial ways you can help decide. Beyond that is where we start getting into the weeds. I'd be happy to answer those at another time, but at least at a high level sander, I think that's a good representation of some of the logic we can do. So from us at trade.io, thanks. Thank you for joining.